All right, so um, this is our last lecture, our last lecture of the semester. Uh, and so what I decided to do for the last lecture is a, a fun lecture. Um, I mean, because none of the others were fun at all. Um, no, now I decided to do a, 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 an optional uh, lecture, uh, and it, it's it's optional even in the sense that it, you know you won't be you, you won't be I'm not going to test you on this material. You're not going to have homework on this material, but uh, it's a a fun extension of some of the ideas that you encountered earlier in the class, and that is the subject of transfinite induction. Okay, so we learned about induction at the beginning of the class, and one of the things I I hope you've come to realize about uh, introductory analysis is it's really a lot about wrestling with the infinite, right? We, we uh, know how to work with finite sums, but what do you do with infinite sums? <coughs> uh, we know how to deal with, uh, with uh, discrete functions, but how do you deal with continuous functions, okay? Uh, and um, how do you, at the very beginning of the semester, how do you count? So um, that's the subject that we're going to wrestle with today. So um, the first thing we have to, to learn about is how to count, and that's the subject of ordinal numbers. And once we define ordinal numbers, then we'll be able to say what it means to do transfinite induction. Uh, induction, if you recall, is uh, basically a way of reasoning about a whole family of statements. Right? How many statements? Well, it countably infinitely many statements, right? And so what transfinite induction will allow us to do is to reason about a whole family of statements where the set of statements might be possibly uncountable, okay? So, uh, but let's first talk about ordinal numbers. So this is really the question of how to count. How do we count? And I'm not going to repeat one of the earlier lectures, uh, but uh, we're going to try to think about counting in a, a sort of more general framework. So the first thing that, that I want to do is, uh, is talk about orderings and then see if this might give us a way of counting. So suppose I have a set X with an order on the set and uh, maybe another set Y with an order on the set. So you might think of this as, I mean, an example might be the real numbers with the usual ordering, or the natural numbers with the usual ordering, or a set of vectors with the lexicographic ordering. Okay. Well, let me define what I mean by an order type. I'm going to say that these two things uh, have the same order type if, um, take a wild guess, these are ordered sets. We'll say they have the same order type. If there is a, good, a bijection between x and y that preserves something, the order, okay? So, so most of the functions in math are interesting because they preserve something, right? In this case, preserving order. So um, let's say these have the same order type if there exists a bijection f from x to y, uh, such that x less than y implies f of x is less than f of y. Okay. All right. So this is, uh, in fact, the if and only if. Okay. So we call this thing, uh, it preserves order, an order isomorphism. And it preserves order. So this is just a way of saying these things look the same from the point of view of orderings. OK. Now, we've learned about one type of ordering already. And that is something called a well ordering. Who can remember what a, a, a well ordering is? So x is well ordered if. Oh, careful, this is well, way before we define compact set. If every something has a something, well-ordered? 
if every if every did we define this earlier yeah. a little order if every has a has a okay so least element if every yeah every subset has a least element or every non non empty subset has a least element okay okay that's what it means to be well ordered so for instance are the real numbers with the usual ordering well ordered no because you could take an open interval and it ha that's a non-empty subset, does not have a least element, okay? Are the integers well-ordered? Yes. Are the, uh, oh, careful, are the natural numbers well-ordered? Yes. Are the integers well-ordered? Give me an example of a subset that doesn't have a least element. 2z, right, all the even integers, for instance. Okay, good. Okay, um, but why did we learn about well ordering way back when? Because it enabled us to do induction. Very good. So we're going to need uh, to develop a concept of well ordered, uh, good concept for well ordered sets for, uh, in order to do transfinite induction. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to present to you is uh, a theory of ordinal numbers, and this is due to von Neumann. 1923, uh, theory of ordinals. Actually, G Georg Cantor um, sort of developed the, 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 the beginnings of the theory of ordinals. And what I'm going to show you is sort of a slick version due to von, von, von Neumann. And uh, the idea here is to uh, help, basically, this helps classify the well ordered sets. Okay, so here's, uh, here's how it goes. This is, this is quite, uh, quite cool. I mean, what's a well-ordered set? What's, what's a well-ordered set look like? I mean, before I even just do this construction, let me just give you a sense of what, uh, what it's good for. Here, here's a, here's a set. I can think four things. I can think of it as being well-ordered. Right, everything to the left is smaller and everything to the right is bigger, yes? Every subset has a least element, yes? Good. Um, let's see, four elements. Um, what about, oh, the natural numbers? Well, that's a set that kind of looks like this, doesn't it? Et cetera, right? Dot, 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 <laughs> yes. Okay, well ordered, yes? Okay, but there are other well-ordered sets besides this, right? There is, for instance, uh, how about this one? How about the natural numbers that go on and include all the ones it did before, and just, just to make things interesting and make sure that they all fit on the board, I'm going to make them get closer and closer on the board, but these, think of these as just points, yeah? Closer and closer, and then right at the very end, after you do all natural numbers of them, I put another element there. Is that a well-ordered set? Yes, it is. Every subset is a least element, yes? OK. What if I, from here, decide I'm going to just start to uh, put another point here? Is this well-ordered, this whole set? Yeah. In fact, every subset is least. Oh, OK. What if I do this? Well-ordered? Yes? Oh. What if I add in a few more points and just keep going then? Dot, 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 dot. In fact, suppose I do the same thing here and then keep going for another natural number collection of sets, indexed sets. Uh, and then, oh, I didn't bring the colored chalk. Suppose I add in yet another point right at the end here. Is that well ordered? Okay, so there are lots of, there's a lots of kinds of well ordered sets. Are these order isomorphic between th this, let's say, two sets of natural numbered sets with a few dots at the end of it? Is it order isomorphic to this? No, there's no bijection that will preserve order. Okay. 